Hello, my name is Jack Wade Nellen and I'm the Dean of the Texas Tech University School of Law. It's such a privilege to share this day with you. Graduates, after years of hard work, determination, and endless hours of studying, here you are, you've made it at last, congratulations. Let me say to the friends and the families of our graduates, I know how incredibly proud you all must be. We all know it's your support that helped these graduates reach this crucial moment. Thank you for that. You've done so much for your loved ones. They appreciate it, and so do we. The hooding ceremony is a very special occasion, one that marks a major milestone in the lives of our graduates. And while we're disappointed not to be able to celebrate in person today, we're very pleased to recognize our graduates in this virtual commencement. We also look forward to celebrating with each of you in a face-to-face -face commencement ceremony when it's safe to do so. It's my pleasure to recognize a few of the special guests we will hear from today. Texas Tech University System Chancellor, Dr. Ted L. Mitchell, Texas Tech University President, Dr. Lawrence Skuvenick, Texas Tech System Board of Regents member, Mark Griffin, a 1979 graduate of the law school, Student Bar Association President, Clint Dye, and our keynote speaker, Holly O'Neill, a 1987 graduate of the law school. From the Texas Tech University System, welcome to graduation. I realize this is very different than what we're all used to with traditional graduation ceremonies, but in fact, today you're making history. This is the first and only online virtual graduation that Texas Tech University System has ever had. And if you think about it for just a minute, all of the degrees that you're getting now are representations of your ability to solve problems. And in this particular environment, this is a perfect example of what that means. Finding yourself with a challenge looking for an opportunity related to that challenge, and then making the best of it. So those of you that are graduating today, think about this for just a moment. This is not the first challenge that we faced as a nation. Look at your parents. Most of your parents would have lived through things like the Cuban Missile Crisis, the assassination of a president, the assassination of Martin Luther King. In the 70s, they would have lived through things like the Watergate Crisis, the Arab oil embargo, the Iranian hostage situation. In the 80s, they would have been around during the collapse of the Soviet Union and the falling of the Berlin Wall. And most of you then were born by the time that we had to face things like the Y2K bug, the 2000 dot-com bubble burst with the economy really tanking at that time. And then of course, there was September 11th. Your parents and you have lived through either one or even two wars in Iraq. The point with all of this is that as a nation and as a people, we've had to deal with crisis time and again and again. But I want you to remember something. Think back on your own childhood. Think back on what your parents did for you. During any of these times of crisis, what your families would do, what your parents would do, is they would still get up every morning, they'd fix you breakfast with a smile, they would get you ready for school, they would go to work, they would save money to prepare for your future. So here you are today. You're now receiving degrees that will allow you to do things that very few people in society can do. The educations that you've received and the degrees that you're being awarded today are representative of your ability to face challenges, overcome them, and not just survive, but thrive. So as part of this historical, virtual graduation ceremony, I would ask that you reflect for just a few minutes about the challenges that in your lifetime we have faced as a nation, about the challenges that your parents faced. And as you look forward, Think about the things you can do to make this world a better place for those that will come after you, including, someday, your own children. 
just remember always to strive for honor. Today is a very special day. This day represents the culmination of an incredible amount of work, determination, and sacrifice by you, but also by your family and all those who supported you. As you gather to watch this virtual commencement ceremony on your televisions, laptops, or phones, it is certainly not the day you or any one of us at Texas Tech had envisioned. Instead of looking into the lens of this camera, I would much rather be standing in front of you in the presence of your loved ones and friends at the United Supermarkets Arena. Although our traditional commencement ceremony was not possible, we must not let it dampen our spirit of celebration for all that you, the class of 2020, has accomplished. For some, graduation represents another step in your academic journey, and for others, the beginning of a completely new chapter of your life. The pathway to this moment has presented obstacles, academic, personal, financial, but you overcame those obstacles and met the challenges that were presented to you. That is why today we celebrate your spirit and perseverance. This unprecedented moment in history provides us with a valuable lesson on just how quickly our life circumstances can change. But despite the challenges and the uncertainties we are facing, it's important to remember that your time at Texas Tech has prepared you for this moment and for your future. Texas Tech is a premier student-focused institution whose graduates not only excel in their profession, but support their communities with a great spirit of generosity and compassion. As a research-focused institution of higher education, we play a critical role in providing insights and solutions to government and industry across West Texas, our state, and the nation. These traits of the Red Raider family have been so evident and we have responded to this unprecedented moment in history. It's in our DNA as Red Raiders to roll up our sleeves and go to work to face our challenges head on. As May 2020 graduate, the skills and character you will take from Texas Tech will position you to make special contributions now and in the future. That's what it means to be Red Raiders. And today you join a new family a family that is built on close personal relationships, common experiences, and a love and passion for a place where you spent some of the most defining years of your lives. Good day. My name is Mark Griffin, and I'm a 1979 graduate of the law school. On behalf of the Texas Tech University system, I want to offer my heartfelt congratulations on this incredible achievement. We are so proud of each and every one of you. I would also like to congratulate your family and friends who supported you and helped you reach this point in your life. It's hard to believe that a little over 40 years ago, I was where you were today, waiting to graduate from the Texas Tech School of Law. You've spent your lives in school working towards this moment. And while it's disappointing that you do not have the opportunity to walk across the stage today, please know these circumstances do not change the fact that you have worked incredibly hard to get here, and today is a celebration of you and all you have achieved. Savor this moment. Let the full weight of your accomplishment sink in. Reflect on those who played a significant role in getting you to this moment. Maybe it was your mom or dad, a spouse, a professor, a mentor. Take a moment and express to them your gratitude for their support. Whether it's in a heartfelt thank you note or an expression of deep affection and appreciation email, I know they will deeply appreciate that kind of note or expression of thanks for years to come. Today is a momentous day in your life. Know that your time here at Texas Tech has prepared you well for all of life's challenges. And you may all find your way to different lines of work, 
But whatever field you choose, whether it's in the practice of law or outside the practice, you will be prepared to handle difficult issues with a legal mind and more importantly, with integrity. But today does not mark the end of your relationship with each other or this law school. The day you accepted your offer of admission, you joined a lifelong community. In fact, you joined a family. And just like your own family, you will be a member of the Texas Tech Law Family for life with lifelong friends because of it. But what does it mean to be a part of a family? It means we help each other. We open doors for each other. And we help each other face life's challenges. Today, you're in for a real treat. Your keynote speaker is a shining example of all it means to be a tech law lawyer. She is incredibly generous with her time and her talents. She's helped numerous tech law students follow in her footsteps. Let me encourage you to learn from the wisdom she shares with you today because she knows what she's talking about. I can assure you when she's done, you'll be ready to take on the world. I hope you feel an enormous sense of pride and sheer joy in what you have achieved. As you join the ranks of an outstanding group of alumni, it's up to you to continue our legacy of achievement, our legacy of scholarship, and our legacy of public service. You are graduates of the Texas Tech University School of Law. And as far, former Dean Walt Huffman famously has said, that's a big deal. Again, congratulations on this important day in your lives. But remember, this is only the beginning. Great things await you because you are a Texas Tech lawyer. Now let me leave you with three wishes, if I may. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge, wish for more wisdom. Congratulations, graduates. Well done. Classmates, faculty, family and friends, what a momentous occasion. We have finally reached the finish line. This may not have been the finish line that we all envisioned on that first day of orientation, but nevertheless, we've made it. I mean, hell, I would have never imagined that I would be attending graduation in pajamas. That being said, I've been in awe with the resilience that each and every one of you have shown, not only over the past three years, but especially currently. I know that things may seem bleak with the current pandemic, you know, concerns with employment, start dates, the bar. However, there's not a group of individuals that I know are more than capable of tackling these unheard of circumstances. There's not another group of individuals that I'm more proud to call peers. I can humbly say that I am not the same person I was when I started law school. I never dreamed that I would learn so much over the past three years, most of which that has nothing to do with the law. The amount of hard work that I've witnessed from each and every one of you since day one is truly astounding. The countless hours, reading, writing, and learning can sometimes overshadow the relationships we all made. It's been a pleasure to go through this journey of law school with each of you. The growth that we have all displayed, not only as advocates, but as people, is indeed rewarding. One of the things that I will truly cherish the most when I look back over these past three years will be all of the memories and friendships I made with each and every one of you. It really saddens me that we cannot be together one last time to celebrate one another, but I believe that we will all cross one, other, one another's paths again, whether that be in August or when taking the bar or in practice. So with that, I implore each of you to remain in contact with each other, help each other in practice, maintain those relationships, and most importantly, use those relationships and the knowledge that we all gained to help others. I know most of us came to law school with the mission to help others. Hold on to that belief and continue to be those tremendous advocates that I've had the pleasure to know over these past three years. I would also be remiss if I did not thank all of the tremendous faculty and staff that have helped us reach this accomplishment. One of the main reasons that I came to Tech Law, as I'm sure with most of you, was for their open door policy with students. We could go to our professors at any time with any concern. 
At first, I believe this only pertained to our education, but as most of us found out, our professors were there for us on any occasion. The mentorship and guidance that you have all imparted on us has been invaluable, both more so the relationships, the relationships we have formed with you as well. As we have witnessed with the recent transition, you all truly love us and care about our future success. We cannot thank you enough for everything. You have helped make this adventure of law school worthwhile. Thank you. And finally, thank you to all the family and friends that had to put up with all of us over the past three years. There have been countless missed birthdays, phone calls, family events, holidays, etc. I'm sure we've all unnecessarily snapped over the phone due to lack of sleep for some sort of reason or the other, or you've seemed to drop off the face of earth at times. I know that some of you uh, as parents may not have ever understood what we were going through or may not have had any idea what we were ever talking about over and over on the phone, but you always answered, you always understood, and you always loved us. With that, we want to thank you. Thank you for understanding and for being those pillars of support. We would not all be here if it was not for that love, support, and understanding that you afforded each of us. Law school can be a grueling experience but the continuous motivation that you provided us is what has really got us to this finish line. This accomplishment is just as much ours as it is yours. Thank you, and we love you. One last time to my classmates, I can't thank you enough for the memories and friendships made. I'll forever look back fondly on my time at Texas Tech School of Law. We did it. We have such a wonderful keynote speaker for you today, Holly O'Neill. A seasoned practitioner with over 30 years of experience, a partner at Foley and Lardner, and a member of the firm's management committee. Celebrated for her courtroom presence and negotiating skills, Holly is one of the premier bankruptcy attorneys in Texas. She focused pri primarily on corporate restructurings and is recognized as a leading attorney in this field by the bankruptcy bar, by judges, and by financial advisors. Holly O'Neill graduated from Tech Law in 1987 and received her BBA in Finance from the Macomb School of Business at the University of Texas in 1983. As a law student, she served as editor-in-chief of the Texas Tech Law Review. Holly has remained an enthusiastic and committed supporter of Texas Tech Law, serving as a trustee on the Texas Tech Law School Foundation Board. In recognition of an outstanding career, she received the law school's Distinguished Alumni Award in 2015. As dean, it is my privilege and honor to welcome Holly as this year's keynote speaker. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. That was the motto of the U.S. Forest Service as delivered by the beloved Smokey Bear. In 1990, the National Park Foundation, recognizing the value of its sister organization's catchy motto, adopted the motto, leave it better than you found it, primarily to encourage campers to be vigilant in not only preventing forest fires, but to take care of themselves and their surroundings. Leave it better than you found it. The implications of that concept far transcend campers on an overnight stay or a daytime hike. Rather, it is a motto that I hope you will consider becoming your personal motto as you embark on your careers as lawyers. Think about that for a moment. Relish in the moment. All 126 of you are about 99%, well, okay, maybe 95% for some of you, on the way of becoming full-fledged licensed lawyers. You only have that pesky bar left to conquer. And remember, you only have to pass. But I digress. Yes, you are about to physically leave Texas Tech Law School, and you may be thinking that it's a little late for me to be advising you to leave it better than you found it while you are virtually walking across the virtual stage away from the law school's hallowed halls. But respectfully, I disagree. To me, leaving it better than you found it does not necessarily mean that you are leaving something behind. Rather, it is more about leaving your mark or your influence for positive change or just positive interaction in everything that you do going forward. You see, as you are embarking on your journey into the field of law, everything you do will be a reflection on this institution. The better we all do as graduates of Texas Tech School of Law elevates each and every one of our stature and affiliation. We all have a common bond. We are graduates of an incredible law school, which for me has given me so much, and I am confident will do the same for you. Everything you do from now on will be a reflection on this law school because make no mistake about it, first and foremost, you will be a lawyer. And more importantly, you will be a Texas Tech lawyer, a doctor of jurisprudence. That is such a powerful calling card. 
And as interesting as it is incredible, the power of that calling card is in your hands. It is indisputable that what you do going forward will make this Texas Tech School of Law a better place than even when you arrived a few short years ago. And unequivocally, and unequivocally, you can leave it better than you found it. I know this for a fact. I stand here in the shadows as well as the light of those who graduated both before me and after me. They are close friends and you know who you are. Monty, June, Rankin, Steve, Julie, David. They are my colleagues at my firm. David, Keith, Kate, Abby, Drew, Ken, Steve. They are trusted colleagues on the foundation board. Tom, David, Susan, Barbara, Glenn, Mimi, Mark, Roger, and so many, many more. They are beloved and honored memories. Brian Longcar and Bob Collier. I wanna to pause to comment about both Brian and Bob. They both loved this law school. Brian and I were classmates, and even though Brian did not graduate at the tip top of his class, he so recognized the value of his Texas Tech law school education and the opportunities it created for him. He simply could not wait to give back. Bob graduated well ahead of me, but I had the privilege and fortune to sit on the foundation board with Bob, and it only took a few moments for Bob's commitment and joy for this law school to reveal itself. Bob was all in and really couldn't fathom anyone who wasn't. Red Raider Nation lost Bob about a month ago. Bob's obituary said this. In 2014, Bob received the Texas Tech Law School Distinguished Alumni Award. Tech was a special place to Bob, and he often found himself sharing TTU positive articles with his family and friends who went to different colleges to share and make public his excitement for his beloved Red Raiders. He was hopeful the recipients of his scholarship endowments at Texas Tech University School of Law will be successful and able to accomplish as much as he was able with his beloved TTU degrees. What is so special about Bob and Brian and all the others is that we all share, and now you will too, this common bond. They exemplify the concept of leaving it better than you found it. You can leave almost everything in your life better than you found it. On a day-to-day -day basis, most of us, most of you, will be starting on new beginnings. You are likely to be the newest member of a team, whether in private or public practice. You may even be the only team member braving the world as a solo practitioner. I submit to you that even the newest member of the team can make it better from day one. How do you do this? You do this with your attitude, your work ethic, and being present with your colleagues, your communities, your state and local bar associations, soon with your own clients, and most importantly, with yourself. So let me pause for a moment with the notion of being present with yourself. It's something we all need to do regularly, a mental and physical check, as consistent as brushing your teeth. It's that important. We have all endured an unprecedented situation over the past couple of months. And although we may not have been physically present with each other, most of us have found inventive ways to nonetheless stay connected and in some ways, even more mentally present with each other than ever before. Ironically, even though more confined in terms of space, we have all had to reach outside of our comfort zones. I will admit that I'm a creature of habit and was not readily adaptable to change. If this circumstance has taught me nothing else, it has revealed that I can modify my behavior, also known as old habits, and not only survive, but thrive after over 30 years of practicing law. I have recently, even in the last seven weeks, discarded some of my tired old work habits and reinvigorated myself in my approach to life, to people, and even to traffic. I know that this may not have been the most ideal conclusion to your law school career, but remember that life is full of challenges and the life of a lawyer is arguably full of nothing but challenges for your clients and on a professional level. In many ways, this challenge or perceived impediment to you concluding your law school education might have been the perfect prelude into the profession. Least there ever be a question, our calling as lawyers is to help our clients through challenging circumstances. You are graduating at a time where our services may be at their greatest need. You know who the first responders are, the women and men in the medical community who are in the front line of maintaining the health of our nation. 
but of no less importance are what I call the second responders, who must utilize their knowledge and skills to help the welfare of the people in our economies. And we as lawyers who are educated and trained with these unique legal skills are duty bound to rise to the occasion in this critical time of need and to overcome the challenges upon us. It will take all of you to participate in that endeavor. You are now and forever a graduate of the Texas Tech University School of Law. You have many to thank for leaving you better than they found you. Your family and significant others who supported you through thick and thin. Your classmates who would grab a beer with you at Chimmy's or Crickets or when you wanted to go really highbrow Cafe J's, maybe after a difficult test. And I can assure you that no one works more tirelessly for you than Dean Nowlin and his incredible staff. Their level of dedication and commitment to Texas Tech Law School and its core values is as unwavering as it is unmatched. They do the right thing every day, all day long. There are so many people working behind the scenes to make this law school great. We are so excited that you are graduating. You have made us all proud, and we know that you are going to carry on the long legacy of integrity, tenacity, and grit that has come to define the graduates of Texas Tech Law School. So I challenge you to leave it better than you found it. Actions always speak louder than words. Eh, some trial lawyers may take issue with that. It is everything you do from now on that will be a reflection on this law school. You are now and forever a Texas Tech lawyer. Be present, be the valued member and a value add to any team. Be the trusted advisor to the client. Be the proud alum that gives back to this school in as many ways as possible. It is your actions from this day forward that for this law school can leave it better than you found it. Thank you, Dean Nowlin, for this once in a lifetime and never dreamed of in a lifetime opportunity. Thank you graduates for your success that brought you to this milestone day and that will be replicated as proud Texas Tech School of Law lawyers in the decades to come. It's a great day to be a Red Raider. Congratulations to everyone. I hope you're able to enjoy the big day even though we couldn't all get together in person. Work hard, go out there, study for the bar exam, and make sure you pass, and then go out there and be the best lawyer you can. Make us all proud. Congratulations. Today we are excited because you are graduating. Be courageous as you face new challenges in life. Use your newly acquired legal skills with, with kindness, honesty, dignity, and integrity. We will miss you. Congratulations. To all of you, congratulations. And may your legal careers bring you great satisfaction, both of the tangible kind and the intangible kind. Go out there, do well, be well, and in the process, make the world a better place. Congratulations, class of 2020. Graduating from law school is a tremendous achievement, and graduating in the spring of 2020 is a feat of perseverance, resilience, and stamina. A lot of the professors are saying their farewells right now, but I have the pleasure of working with you for a few more months. So go celebrate your graduation, and when you're ready to get back to work, I will be here to help you wreck the bar exam. Congrats again, and I'll see you soon. Congratulations, graduates. It seems like just yesterday you were beginning your law school journey. I'm sorry that it's ending so differently than you could have imagined. But already you have shown such resilience and an ability to adapt that will serve you really well in the practice of law. And you'll always have a story to tell. Class of 2020, congratulations. I'm proud of you and proud for you. Go out and be world beaters. Wreck them. Congratulations, class of 2020. It's been such an honor to watch you learn and grow over the last three years, and I am so proud of every single one of you. From where you started to where you are today, you have triumphed over so many challenges, and you've been chiseled into powerful advocates who are going to go out and change the world, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. Congratulations, lawyers. The class of 2020 is such a special group of students. You guys have a reputation for camaraderie with each other and for incredible service to our community. You've made tech law a better place to be, and I can't wait to see what good you guys do out in the world. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Cannot wait to see what comes next for you all. Congratulations on this accomplishment. 
Part of the mission of Texas Tech Law is to prepare individuals for the effective and ethical practice of law. You, class of 2020, are prepared. Welcome to the legal profession and welcome to the family of more than 8,000 Texas Tech Law alumni. Congratulations to the class of 2020 Texas Tech University School of Law graduates. I wish you all the best in your legal career. Hello, May 2020 graduates, Dean Chapman here. I just want to tell each and every one of you how incredibly proud I am of each of you. Um, and it has been a pleasure getting to know each of you over these past two years. If I can ever do anything for you in the future, please let me know. Guns up. To the class of 2020, I just want to take a second and say congratulations. You made it to the finish line. I have enjoyed every second of getting to know you, and I am just so thankful to have been a part of your journey. I know you guys are going to do great things, and we are so proud of you. Congratulations. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Your shared experiences have made you better human beings and will make you even greater attorneys. Attorneys that will face future obstacles with the same courage, creativity, and outstanding success. Godspeed. Although I would have preferred to do so in person, I want to extend my heartiest congratulations to the members of the class of 2020 for a job well done under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. I wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. Hey class of 2020, Danielle here. Um, as my very first class in admissions, I just wanted to let you all know the special place you'll forever have in my heart. Um, congrats, we love you guys and we can't wait to see what y'all do in the future. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I am so, so proud of everything that you've accomplished over the last three years, and I can't wait to see what you do in the future. Please keep in touch, and as your criminal law and torts professor, let me just remind you one more time, be a reasonable person, don't enter into criminal conspiracies, and don't keep exotic animals as pets. Best of luck. Well, hey everybody, it's the Sherwins. You know, every year on graduation day, we wake up and we tell each other, this is our favorite day of the year. And that's because we not only get to celebrate this three year journey that we've taken with you, but because we get to look around the law school and the arena and see the pride and joy on your and your loved ones faces. And even though this year is tough, because we don't get to see all of those smiling faces, we want you to know what an honor it's been for us to teach you. And we want to thank you for teaching us about what it means to stay positive and to persevere. So, from, from our, our front, front porch to yours, yours congratulations. congratulations. We, we love, love you. you. Hey, 2020 graduates, this is Paula Smith. I want to offer my sincere congratulations on your graduation. I'm sorry we're not here together, but we will be soon. And in the meantime, I am cheering for your success. I'm ringing the job bell in your honor, not just for a job, a job now, a job later, but for your success. We will now proceed with the recognition of individual graduates. Eleanor Browning Anderson, hooded by Kylie Acock and Camille Youngblood. Philip E. Arendal, hooded by Benjamin P. Garcia and Ashley Von Sterkula. Jessica Marie Acock, hooded by Professor Catherine M. Christopher and Professor B. Allison Clayton. Catherine Brooke Baldo, hooded by Nick Baldo and Melissa Baldo. Elizabeth Aylin Bolito, hooded by Carlos Barlito and Jennifer Bolito. Samuel Anthony Bernbach, hooded by Professor M. Alexander Pearl. Ryan Matthew Choi Betcher, hooded by Hooding Professor. Brooke Michelle Bolin, hooded by Professor Robert T. Sherwin. Travis Harlan Boltz, hooded by Professor Jorge 
A. Ramirez. James Lee Brooks, hooded by Professor M. Alexander Pearl. Taylor Lauren Calvert, hooded by Professor M. Alexander Pearl. Cooper Leanne Carter, hooded by Professor Dustin B. Benham and Professor Vaughn E. James. Todd Garrett Cohen, hooded by Pudding Professor. Kevin Arthur Colpoise, hooded by Professor William R. Keffer. Garrett J. Coppedge, hooded by Professor Catherine M. Christopher. Miranda Elizabeth Crow, hooded by Professor Deleith Duke Gossett. Janisha Champagne Davis, hooded by Professor Q. Dwight McDonald. Felicia De Leon, hooded by Professor Donnell W. Yandel. Jeffrey S. Delman, hooded by Professor Brian D. Shannon. Augustus Tilden Denham, hooded by Pudding Professor. Dana Man Megan Dinkins, hooded by Professor Donnell W. Yandel and Professor Roderick E. Wetzel. Tracy Lee Dion, hooded by Professor Richard D. Rosen. Jacob Lee Dow, hooded by Assistant Dean Danielle Saavedra. Clint James Dye, hooded by Professor Rishi R. Batra and Deidre Ward. Christopher Chukwamika Egbuniki, hooded by Professor Terry M. Morgison. Angela Del Carmen Estrada, hooded by Professor Charles P. Bubini. Alexa Ray Gist, hooded by Benjamin P. Garcia. Kathleen Ann Gogol, hooded by Professor Rishi R. Batra and Professor Gary R. Terrell. Jose Angel Gutierrez, hooded by Professor Sally M. Henry. Haley Meredith Hanners, hooded by Professor Jerry W. Byer. Mason J. Harlan, hooded by Professor Jared S. Gonzalez. John Taylor Harris, hooded by Professor John L. Watts. Jordan C. Harrison, hooded by Carolyn Harrison. John Connor Haugen, hooded by John Haugen. Noah Blaine Hearn, hooded by Professor David N. Strange. Brandon Paul Eiley, hooded by Ron Eiley. Sarah Miles Jakeley, hooded by Professor Eric A. Cipinelli and Professor B. Allison Clayton. Javon Lewis Johnson, hooded by, profess hooded by Hooding Professor. William Wood Johnson, hooded by Hooding Professor. Clinton C. Jones, hooded by Hooding Professor. Michaela Elizabeth Key, hooded by Hooding Professor. 
William Scott Keffer, hooded by Professor William R. Keffer. Adam A. Kujas, hooded by Professor Wendy Tolson Ross. Connor Coleman Lee, hooded by Gregory P. Lee. Patrick A. Lamasters, hooded by Hooding Professor. Mark Ian Arroyo Limshiko, hooded by Nico Nemeth and Matthew Rowland. Manuel E. Lopez III, hooded by Professor Delith Duke Gossett and Professor Dustin B. Benham. Cody Ty Lyon, hooded by Hooding Professor. Catherine Louise Mallon, hooded by Professor Delief Duke Gossett and Professor Dustin B. Benham. Ryan Matson, hooded by Hooding Professor. Graham L. McCain, hooded by Hooding Professor. Joshua McGraw, hooded by Professor Richard W. Murphy. Morgan Ann Nicole McNabb, hooded by Professor Donnie W. Yandel and Professor Dustin B. Benham. James Gerardo Mendez, hooded by Professor Dustin B. Benham and Professor John L. Watts. Kimberly Morgan Molina, hooded by Professor William R. Keffer. Robert Tippin Montgomery, hooded by Jim Hund. John Tyler Myers, hooded by Hooding Professor. Lauren Denise Ogle, hooded by Professor John L. Watts. Elizabeth Olivedos, hooded by Hooding Professor. Maria Nicolasa Ortiz, hooded by Professor Jerry W. Byer. Sarah Kathleen Paciente, hooded by Professor William R. Keffer and Professor Roderick E. Wetzel. Chandler Evan Patterson, hooded by Professor Bree D. Sherwin and Professor Robert T. Sherwin. Robert Colton Payne, hooded by Professor M. Alexander Pearl. Tylin Ray Payne, hooded by Professor M. Alexander Pearl and Robert T. Sherwin. David James Penn, hooded by John Penn. Christian Thomas Jordan Perez, hooded by Professor Terry M. Morgison. Tracy Allison Kayomi Pettis, hooded by Professor Allison M. Drake. Carla F. Pizarro, hooded by Perry Q. Minton. Justin Allen Plesha, hooded by Professor Dustin B. Benham and Professor Eric A. Cipinelli. Jody Rose Rankin, hooded by Professor Charles P. Bubini. Reed Parker Rendon, hooded by Hooding Professor. Daniel Allen Reynolds, hooded by Professor Dustin B. Benham. Joseph Aaron Reynolds, hooded by Professor Robert T. Sherwin. J. 
Newton Riggs, hooded by Professor M. Alexander Pearl and Professor Terry M. Morgison. Michael D. Reinhardt, hooded by Hooding Professor. Callie Ann Reiner, hooded by Professor Robert T. Sherwin. Christopher Kelly Roach, hooded by Kelly E. Roach. William Seth Roberts, hooded by Phil Roberts. Alana Eve Rosen, hooded by Professor Richard D. Rosen and Robert M. Rosen. Vanessa Rodriguez Rubio, hooded by George M. Rubio. Ashley N. Sanders, hooded by Hooding Professor. Rebecca Ann Sanders, hooded by Professor Donnie W. Yendell. Danielle Jonathan Ray Seaborn, hooded by Professor Sally M. Henry. Jo Joseph C. Shelley, hooded by Professor Bree D. Sherwin and Professor Brian T. Camp. Jake Michael Stribling, hooded by Professor Jerry W. Byer and Professor Dustin B. Benham. Destiny R. Tatum, hooded by Professor Bree D. Sherwin. Sheena Nicole Teague, hooded by Professor Jerry W. Byer. Duncan Thomas Turnus, hooded by Jeff Hayes. Eric Eduardo Velez, hooded by Professor Richard D. Rosen and Sean Adams. Austin C. Vincent, hooded by Aaron Morrow Holly and Josh Holly. Luke Andrew Wallace, hooded by Professor Delief Duke Gossett. Brianna Marie Weiss, hooded by Professor Tracy Resco Pearl and Professor Patrick S. Metz. Dolph Otto Wenzel, hooded by Professor William R. Keffer. Harrison Hurst Weir, hooded by Professor Brian D. Shannon. Philip Sherwood Wildman, Jr., hooded by Professor John L. Watts and Professor Brian T. Camp. Hillary B. Wilkerson, hooded by Professor Jamie J. Baker and Professor Allison M. Drake. Jaden Taylor Williams, hooded by Hooding Professor. Seth Randall Wilson, hooded by Professor Bree D. Sherwin. Sydney Simone Wiltshire, hooded by Professor Q. Dwight McDonald and Professor Patrick S. Metz. Travis P. Yandel, hooded by Hooding Professor. August John Zimmerman II, hooded by Professor Dustin B. Benham. I proudly present to you the class of 2020. Congratulations. We salute your dedication and perseverance as you continue your path to success. We will now hear remarks from Angel Gutierrez, who received his Master of Engineering earlier today. We made it, we made it. Oh crap, we made it. At this time, I have to say that when I wrote this speech, I did not use the word crap, but the powers that be decided that the original word was not becoming of those about to enter such a noble profession. So please use your imagination and enter whatever four letter word you feel is appropriate. I first want to apologize to everyone who has to sit through this speech, 
as it will surely not be one of those life-changing speeches that you see online that everyone searches for. In true COVID-19 fashion for this speech, I did just enough to earn the credit. In anticipation of this speech, I watched countless other commencement and farewell speeches. You know the great orators, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, President Barack Obama, etc. And I think I've solved the mystery of the greatest speech, discovered the secret recipe, if you will. One, the person giving the speech must be extremely rich. And at this point, you can tell that this is not gonna go very well. The speech should be on average 18 minutes. Now I know many of you almost fainted, but do not fret for I've only been given five. Three, one should speak an average of 160 words per minute. That was a close one. And four, the speaker gives a riveting backstory with a great challenge that was overcome. And five, the speech ends with the ever quotable parting words of encouragement. I have to say something today that I didn't think I would ever have to say after attending Texas Tech School of Law. At least not this soon. Texas Tech did not prepare me for this. Texas Tech did not prepare me to say goodbye to the safety of the school's walls, to venture into an unknown world. It did not prepare me to say goodbye to some of my closest friends, some of whom I may never see again. Over my last three years, I've learned to love words. Forget the dog. For a lawyer, words are your best friend. We have learned to interpret words and manipulate words. We have learned to effectively read, write, and speak those words. We learn big words, complicated words. We learn not to trust the court when they start using Latin words. Thank you for that, Professor Watts. And despite all of this training, it is at this moment that words fail me. So instead, I must tell you what I feel. I feel a strong connection, a bond with all of you, my fellow classmates that are graduating with me today. When anyone asks me what law school is like or how I could become so close with people in such a short amount of time, I always give them the same answer, crisis bonding. If you're not familiar with the term, let me explain. We are all familiar with the movies in which the main characters are in a hostage situation where they have to work together, rely on each other to survive. And after a heroic collective effort, they make it out. And at the end of the movie, the two main characters are relieved, breathing heavily, staring at each other in, the, in their eyes, and they say those wonderful words. You know them. We made it, we made it. Oh crap, we made it. And those people at that moment are no longer hostages, but survivors. Now I'm not saying that law school is like a high pressure hostage situation, but law school is like a high pressure hostage situation. We made it through law school because of, and maybe even in spite of each other, but we made it through together. And we share a bond that few will understand, but I know I will always cherish. See, we all felt the same excitement and uneasiness when we showed up on our first day of orientation. The same shock when the first person was cold called in our very first class. We shared the same collective gasp when a student told Professor Watts she was gonna pass on her cold call on that first day of class. We have suffered through long days and late nights, writing appellate briefs and doing three back-to-back -back rounds of mock trial. Writing comments, editing papers, preparing presentations, working, volunteering, representing clients, raising children, caring for family and loved ones, dealing with a global pandemic and still persisting with our education. And in the end, you did not merely survive this hostage situation that we call law school, you thrived. Law school is an experience that truly changes you, how you think, how you act, how you perceive the world. But what hasn't changed is my desire to be both a leader and a caring person who will make a positive impact in our community. And I know each of you share that purpose. I wanna thank each of you for three of the greatest years of my life. I've had some of the great ex experiences, made some of the greatest friends, and had some of the greatest accomplishments in my time here. I am incredibly proud of everything that we have accomplished, not only as individuals, but more importantly, as a class. I again feel that excit excitement and uneasiness that I felt on the first day of orientation. Uneasy about the unknown future and pure, unadulterated excitement to see what amazing things I know each of you will undoubtedly do and the amazing lawyers I know you will all become. So Texas Tech School of Law 2020 graduates, here we are, standing arm in arm as the sun rises after an arduous ordeal, still reeling from our adrenaline-filled heroic actions, shocked, breathing heavily as the flood of relief begins to wash over us. The crisis is over and we have come out victorious, fundamentally changed and ready to take on the world. There are only 11 words that I can leave you with. 
And I hope you can join me in speaking those wonderful words that we all know so well from all those movies. We made it, we made it. Oh crap, we made it. Thank you and wreck me. Graduates, we are so very proud of you. You've accomplished so much during law school. Today is a very special day and I hope you spend it celebrating your achievement with your families and friends in person or virtually. You're now law school graduates and that is truly something to be proud of. But remember, there's still one more step in fulfilling your goal to be an attorney, passing the bar exam. I have three words of advice on the bar exam, just three words, study, study, study. We know the exam is hard, but we also know you can do it. Your education here has prepared you for success and we have faith in you. Let me say in closing, you will always be part of the Texas Tech Law family. We will never forget you and we've missed you these last two months. Please be sure to stay in touch. We wanna hear about your many accomplishments going forward. Nothing will make us happier than seeing your success throughout the years. Thank you for the privilege of sharing this day and congratulations again to the class of 2020.